Yeah, so the fascial distortion model is able to help guide a practitioner towards treatment based because the model is based on the patient's input. So the patient is the expert. Patient guides us as practitioners by body language or gestures and also their verbal description of their pain. So pain gestures and verbal description guides the practitioner and we're able to key off of that recurrent theme of the patient being the expert. They show us exactly what the pain they're feeling, how they're feeling it, and we guide our treatment based on that description of the pain. It's a pattern recognition model. So the fascial distortion model really looks at six different types of patterns of gestures that people do when they have an injury. So when they show a certain gesture, we are going to use a certain manual therapy technique that's going to match it at that time. So there's less guesswork. So if they show finger to a single spot on a bone, we're going to treat differently for that than if they draw a line up and down their arm. Or if they dig in with multiple fingers into a soft tissue spot, each one of those hand gestures is going to lead us to a different treatment. So okay. I broke my hand two years ago and didn't know it at first. Had pain, I immediately grabbed it and I started working on it subconsciously. I wasn't thinking about this fascial distortion model, but I had the pain gone in an hour. I still had a broken bone. And when I went to get an x-ray and they said, you have a broken bone, you need a splint and a cast, they asked me what I wanted for my pain, what pain medications. And it was a friend of mine that was a physician assistant. I'm like, I don't need your pain medication. I fixed the pain. I just need help now stabilizing this fracture now that I know that it's a fracture but I don't need your pain medication. And I said, well, you don't have to be a hero about it. You don't have to be a tough guy. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm kind of a wimp. I just don't have any pain, so I'm not gonna take anything for pain because that was all taken care of by working on the fascia around the bone. And then you can help me stabilize the fracture. I work with a lot of primary care physicians. I'm a family physician by training, and I have uh, taught all of the family physicians in my clinic and my, our, our walk-in clinic, and they preferentially will use the fascial distortion model to treat pain. Uh, they, they, have, they jokingly tell me they'll treat one area of pain, anything more complex, than they're going to refer to us. Uh, so the techniques are quick to learn, easy to utilize, and they're, they're, the, the family physicians love it because they're able to address a patient's pain complaint, whether it's back pain or an acute pain problem, and still have time for treating cholesterol and hypertension. In fact, one of the residencies associated with the Mayo Clinic, uh, the, the director will make a bargain with the patient. She'll say, I will address your pain as long as you will listen to me about diet modification, health, and exercise for your blood pressure and your cholesterol. Uh, the treatments are quick, hands-on, uh, utilizing the thumb usually. Um, some of them can be uncomfortable and painful, so we have to have a conversation with the patient that it's gonna, it could be potentially painful and may leave a bruise. Some of the other uh, treatments are completely pain-free, and so not everything we do hurts. In the past, some people have been turned off because of some of the manual therapies are, are some of what we do is painful, but patients appreciate it because they know what it needs to happen in order to get better. Uh, patients intuitively will be doing some of these things on their own. They'll be seeking out um, intense massage. They'll be pressing on things themselves. So we use the thumb to apply direct pressure uh, on herniated trigger points or a, a line of pain will be ironing out a wrinkle in the fascia all which can be uh, uncomfortable, painful, but intuitively as a patient, we know it's what needs to happen. And as a pr practitioner, we're guided specifically by the patient. And they'll often tell us when we're not on it. They'll be like, you're not on the right spot. You need to push harder over there or move this way. Coming from A.T. Still, the founder of osteopathy, the, that phrase when you deal with the fascia, you deal and do business with the branch office of the brain, it just speaks to the fact that our nervous system goes out throughout the body, it is an extension of the brain. So the brain just doesn't end right at the base of the skull where we learn it in school, like here's the brain, now spinal cord, it continues on. And those branch endings of the nerves are in the fascia, they're right underneath the skin. So when we dance around and touch the skin and touch the fascia, it is having an input into the nervous system. We find that 
people who are interested in learning the fascial distortion model get reinvigorated to learn to learn something new that they can offer patients that doesn't involve a prescription. Um, we all get into, as, as physicians, we get into a prescription writing pathway and it's what we have to offer. Um, we find that family practitioners actually love, both MD and DO, love the opportunity to do something more than provide a prescription. When I work with the family medicine residents, some of them come into a special clinic that we do that's only fascial distortion model with no warning whatsoever. They're just told to show up at a certain time. And so we have to start from scratch. We're gonna go and watch hand signals and treat. And they get blown away sometimes like, okay, we just, we just treated this and it's better. We didn't use any medication. We didn't use any injections. We didn't refer out for any labs, imaging, surgery. We just treated it with our hands and they're better. And they're, like, they're shocked. I'm like, yes, you can do this. And it, you know, some of this can be quite simple. You can apply this in a few minutes to your patients. And they just get really overjoyed that now they can actually doctor somebody. That doctor can be a verb and not just a noun.